And having mentioned core history books and uh, biographies and autobiographies of our generals, I'll speak, if I may, a little more personally about my own journals. Um, <clears throat> I started keeping a periodic journal. It's not, I don't write it daily, uh, but I write it frequently. I started keeping a periodic journal in the late 1980s. Uh, it was a time when I was troubled in my spirit and resorted to uh, what some call finger therapy. So I, I write it longhand. The finger therapy of keeping a personal journal. Some of you may do it as well. And I found that this served as a release for what could not be said or written in public. And I found it indeed therapeutic. I told Helen, my wife, I was starting on this habit. And I also told my children. However, only Helen was free to read what was written. My kids knew that they weren't allowed to read it. One day, they will. Uh, Helen was free to read it. A husband and wife need to trust each other in such things. So Helen would read my journal from time to time, commenting little, um, being already aware of the things that exercised me, for we talked all the time about absolutely everything. Things personal, things practical, things spiritual, things huge, things small, things public, things private, things army. Now, if you're looking for a candidly written work, you need look no further than my journals. The only snag is that I'll not let you near me. Uh, I write... I write in huge, full scale, bound and lined volumes. And this is volume one. There are now four volumes like this. Um, I write uh, in ballpoint pen. As each book fills up, it goes off to be professionally bound, as you see, and embossed in gold lettering. Why? Why this? What will become of these volumes on my death? Uh, Will my children take them into their care? My son John is here tonight. Or should the work be gifted to the International Heritage Center? Would anybody be interested in reading them? Anybody interested in reading them? Huh? Uh, see if you get a mention. If they end up in the International Heritage Center, should all and sundry have free access to them? Or could we arrange, and there are precedents for this, Limited or closely controlled access? These are all good questions. When I was researching in the USA archives, I wanted access to uh, the personal diaries of an American commissioner. I was researching the extent of pacifism uh, amongst American salvationists, and I could only find one person who, who, who was a self-confessed pacifist. And uh, he was a commissioner. And I wanted to look at his diaries for the years of the Second World War. Um, they were held in the uh, American archives, but before giving me access, it was necessary to get the written consent of one of two named members of the family uh, who would say either yes or no to uh, the researcher's request. Uh, I don't know if our own archives here have arrangements like that from time to time about certain materials. But all of that thing, uh, all of those issues can be addressed when necessary. For now, for the moment, the main question arising from my journals is whether or not to use them by quoting from them directly and freely in my autobiographies. And then it becomes a matter of which bits to quote, uh, the candid bits or the careful bits. And what's the point in quoting the careful bits? because that just glosses over things. But if I were to quote the candid bit, dot, 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 unfinished sentence. I have among my many books a prized volume given me some years ago by Major Ethne Flintoff, a comrade officer from New Zealand who served very ably with Helen and me in Pakistan. Uh, it's a single volume published by SPNS Limited in 1925 and entitled Extracts from General Booth's Journal 
1921 to 22. It makes, uh, <coughs> I found it compelling reading, uh, but I've not the slightest doubt that William Booth, that Bramwell Booth would never have released it without it first being heavily edited. And this gives me food for thought. It also makes me feel closer to Bramwell, uh, knowing that he too felt the need for finger therapy. 